After years of waiting and dreaming and hoping, imagining a better, greener, hyperscalable, decentralized future, the bright light burning inside of me began to flicker and fade. But I never let it die. No, I never lost faith. Sure, people said I was crazy, told me to give up. They said the day would never come. Tried to show me Solana and Elrond. But my spirit would not be broken because I always knew this day would come. Finally, a better world is just three weeks away. My friends, my fellow Ethereans, our moment has come. <laughs> Yes, hard as it is to believe after all the setbacks, breakthroughs, delays, two steps forward, one step back, three steps sideways, up, down, left, right. The single most significant event in blockchain history is upon us. The coming together of the proof of work beacon chain, the consensus layer, with the Ethereum mainnet, the execution layer. It's merge time, my friends. And from a technical standpoint, this is high stakes, tightrope walking of the highest order. Now, for anyone who's not up to speed, pause this video right now and go watch this. Otherwise, stay tuned because we're about to deliver the good, the bad, and the downright dangerous. This is The Defiant. So let's start with the good. Assuming the merge goes without a hitch, it sets the stage for the next era of hyperscalability that could ultimately see Ethereum handle as many as 100,000 transactions per second. Not my words, but those of the cybernetic organism and hip hop visionary, Vitalik himself. Still, ETH 2.0 yo's next level throughput remains several steps and 64 individual shard chains away. In fact, as Vitalik described it, the post-merge Ethereum will only be 55% complete, with the remaining 45% consisting of a one, two, three, four part roadmap that devs have described the surge, the verge, the purge, and the splurge. But first, a quick word from our sponsors. Mata! Would you like to earn higher yield in a safe and sustainable manner? Well, check out Unipilot, a Uniswap v3 liquidity optimizer which keeps your capital concentrated around the current trading price at all times, so you earn higher returns and save on gas. Yield is sustainably derived from liquidity provider fees with APR for numerous vaults in the triple digits. Put your liquidity on Autopilot today to earn higher rewards at unipilot.io. When you shop for plane tickets, you probably use Kayak, Expedia, or Google Flights. So why would you limit yourself to just one exchange when you trade crypto? To make sure you're getting the best possible price, you should use a DEX aggregator like Matcha. Matcha routes your orders across all the various DeFi exchanges on Ethereum, Polygon, Avalanche, BSC, Phantom, Celo, and Optimism to provide the best possible prices without taking any commissions. Matcha has integrated fiat on-ramps so you can buy directly with your credit or debit card and uses smart order routing that splits your order across multiple liquidity sources. With Matcha, you can make limit orders on chain so you can set and forget your DeFi trades. And now Matcha even offers gasless trading. Head over to matcha.xyz forward slash defiant and connect your wallet to start smarter with Matcha. So the merge is only the first of many hurdles to clear before Ethereum can spread its wings, but there's still plenty to look forward to before then. And one of the things that has ETH holders frothing at the mouth like a bunch of overexcited puppies is the supply implications. Yes, in the 12 months since the London hard fork and the implementation of EIP-1559, we've seen over 2.5 million Ether burned, worth a combined total of around $4 billion. ETH may not be deflationary just yet, but it has laid the foundations for what comes next, the so-called triple halvening, which, in theory, could herald the arrival of what some have described as ultrasound money.
but it is not an instant fix. And as Vitalik pointed out at the Biddle conference in Seoul last month, annual issuance will be equal to 166 times the square root of the number of staked ETH. In simple terms, that means Ether supply will increase at a decreasing rate. And I will say that again for those of you with mathematically challenged brains, Ether supply will increase at a decreasing rate as more and more validators join the network. And why wouldn't they? I mean, hello. You're an idiot. Hello. Yep. Yep, yep. It's Jim Cramer. Yeah. <laughs> I know, I know, he's an idiot. Um, what is that? Oh yeah, yeah, listen to this. Buy Ethereum, that's when you buy Ethereum, right? There buy Ethereum. Go. Oh, God. That is the sound of institutions falling over themselves at the promise of an irresistible annual 20% ESG friendly ocean cleaning, life giving ultrasound deflationary yield. Ah, not so fast. Let's not get our undergarments in a twist over unrealistic expectations because let's face it, if it sounds too good to be true, yes, you're right, it probably is. Now some of the numbers we've heard surrounding supply and staking yield might have been a smidge over optimistic, based on the hopeful assumption that total transactions would continue guzzling gas like we were stuck in a perpetual, never-ending NFT slash DeFi summer. For post-merge ETH to in fact become fully deflationary and offer the outsized double-digit yields some people are hoping for, total network use, and by extension the burn rate, need to go up in order to mitigate against the rewards that are going to the validators. This is the same problem that every proof-of-stake network comes up against. Plus, let's not forget the fact that in a post-merge, hitch-free future, more and more validators will of course jump on the bandwagon and then dilute the rewards collectively up for grabs. Now that's of course a really good thing in terms of securing an increasingly decentralized network. More validators is a good thing. But when we encounter inflation, the likelihood of real yield, remember that term, real yield, hitting the highs some have suggested, well, it just doesn't hold up. I'm sorry, Justin. Speaking of decentralization, it would be impossible to discuss the imminent merge without addressing the elephant in the room. Because while Ethereans like Ryan and David's perfectly groomed heads are about to explode with pre-merge excitement, oh, I'm sorry. Others are erring on the side of caution and even suggesting, yes, pushing it back for the 10,000th time. And that's because looming large above the big day is professional party pooper and amateur inflation reduction specialist, Janet Yellen, brandishing her favorite four letter word, oh fuck. Tornado Cash receiving the SDN treatment has thrown out some pretty big questions around censorship and decentralization in a post-merge world and with serious implications too. At present, the Beacon Chain has almost half a million validators, mostly concentrated within the hands of a very few key players. I mean, your boy Lido, Coinbase, your man Kraken, and a handful of others collectively, while well, they control more than 50% of staked ETH. And that, if you do the maths, and it's not very hard maths, is not decentralized at all. That's the sound of the police! Yeah, right, the centralization alarms were ringing across crypto Twitter because all this third party staking means Ethereum could easily give up control to a select minority of operators. The security risks are one thing, but what about censorship? Base layer censorship. Some of the biggest operators are domiciled in the US, and if these guys decided to bend the knee to the government, which they may not have any choice in the matter, well, then they could reverse transactions freeze wallets, delete dApps, you name it. Suddenly, Ethereum isn't only not centralized, it's actually controlled by, of all people, Mr. Sleepy Joe Biden. And what option do block producers even have, apart from following Joe into bed for a lovely nap? But whether they want to comply or not is beside the point. I mean, Coinbase is a public company. Surely it's not about to square off with the Federales. You tell him, big brain. Yep. The bald eagle has spoken. And he says, if faced with the grim choice between censorship 
and compliance. Coinbase would sooner shut down its staking services than play ball with the treasury. Hopefully this is the kind of hypothetical last resort we won't actually see play out. But short of Coin Center leveling a successful case against the US government, staking operators will be presented with some pretty tough decisions. Ryan suggested that the threat of social slashing will keep centralized staking providers from censoring transactions on the basis that there's a fiduciary responsibility to stop staking if oh fuck tells them to censor. And while some block producers may agree, others have pointed to what else? The T's and C's on Lido, for example, which could suggest otherwise. Anyway, for a detailed analysis of the options available to validators, check out BitMEX's deep dive on the eight potential ways block producers could navigate this regulatory cluster OFAC. Something the less generous Bitcoin maxis appear to be rejoicing in, bless them. They, bah, they need to cheer something, don't they? Shamelessly using the situation to promote their monolithic vision of the future. Of course, all the hype surrounding Chana Guo's hotly anticipated proof of work Ethereum chain has now seen its thunder stolen by this hot mess of a situation, which itself raises the possibility of yeah, another fork. A proof of stake fork. Stake fork. Oh God, you can see the headlines now, can't you? So Ryan's come out saying, what if Coinbase senses validators? Which it appears they won't. We will fork Ethereum. You tell him, Ryan. We get an old fuck Ethereum and a real Ethereum. Everyone gets to choose. Oh, fuck ETH or ETH. Apps, tokens, holders, users. Pick a side. Sell your old fuck ETH for real ETH or don't. The most credibly neutral chain will win. Oh my God, I'm so bored. How many Twitter threads have you read this week, Tom? A fair few. A fair few. I mean, yeah, but also, no. Unfortunately, it's not necessarily the most credible neutral chain that wins. As Vitalik himself agreed, it's the stable coin issuers that get to bestow victory. And unfortunately, if Circle is willing to play ball over this OFAC saga, then, well, we know how that story ends. Tether has already shown its hand, but yeah, like I said, this story has barely begun. And there are so many variables at play, like, post-merge, censorship, MEV concerns, or whether the merge is even successful. We simply can't know how it's all going to pan out. And I bet you this, if I walk out onto the street right now and ask the man on the street whether he gives two strofacts about the merge, he'll probably say no. But us, we'll be covering all the drama as it unfolds. And if you don't have any plans for merge day, then get ready to call a sickie and join us for the world's wickety, 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 wackety, wackety, light, what? What? <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be me watching David and Ryan, your boys from ETH, from Bankless, watching ETH developers watch the merge and watch themselves have the best day of their lives. And all of this, finally, just to go away so we can talk about something else. What a time to be alive. Peace out to yourselves. Don't get lost in the merge, the splurge, and all this silly string like me. See ya. This was The Defined. Mm.